Gifu is a prefecture that really has it all. Last time we visited the amazing Aina Gorge, and this time we're visiting the capital of Gifu. Well, Gifu. There, I'm going to take a look at the castle, I'm going to feed some squirrels, and go to an outside adventure park playground thing. It was really awesome. Come and join me and see what we find. My hotel was a nice short walk from the station. The outside's a little retro, but inside, well, let me show you. And here we have my hotel in Gifu. Looks a bit nicer on the inside than the outside. We've got a desk, which I do sorely miss. Somewhere to hang our clothes. A bed with, again, only one pillow, so I'll have to ask for another one. Got a fridge, and not a bad view. As far as the bathroom goes, we have Quite an old fashioned looking bathroom, to be true. An okay size looking bath, although interestingly, it seems to be a little like some timer, which isn't great for having a bath. I'll figure that out. And lying on the bed, it doesn't feel half bad. This is an okay one. I'm gonna do a gym on Pokemon and then unpack and explore. And outside the room, there's a single microwave. So if you need to do something like that, then you can. Inside the room there was a kettle as well, I just forgot to film it. So I asked so I asked for my second pillow, and I love what my limited Japanese gives me the ability to do. Because they said like ima, it's like do you need it now? I said, I don't need it now, but I also don't know the word to say later. So yes, I'll have it now. Now for my first day, since there's only about an hour and a half until sundown, I need to catch my breath, Christ. I can't explore that much. But I want to see the city, so I found an observation deck to view, but Follow Google's path, and while it's showing me this lovely tree, I cannot see a path continuation in sight unless. Is this it? Okay, I've just found it. Okay, yeah, this is the right path. It leads through the underbrush. Is it the right word? Whatever. The sounds of machinery in the distant background. I don't think I'd want to walk this path at night because it's just time for bores. But during the day, I can see what's going on. It's a lovely little start to give. Oh, yeah. Look at that view, holy. And the sunsets come out to play. This direction looks beautiful until you can make out hundreds of flies. So we'll look at this direction, look. Beautiful now, if we're going to play the game of what we can spot in the distance, I actually can't make out too much. Now, I can just about see an Aeon Mall over there. The sign's big enough. I don't know what any of these big skyscrapers are, nor any of the mountains around. But you can see at least five layers deep of mountains in that direction. And that is gorgeous. As for the main attractions I've outlined today, tomorrow we head deeper into this forested area to find the castle and Obu Nobunaga's residence, which is one of the key historical figures in Japan. And for the day after, there is a very interesting art theme park I've seen in this direction. But we can't see that from here, so you have to watch the video and see. Now all that's left is to figure out how to get down, because uh, I'd like to go a different way. Let's figure it out, and then we're going to the one place we must visit in every single city in Japan. But before we get there, I am on my way back, and I had the choice of the high road or the low road. They could both be interesting, but I kind of feel like the low road, not just because it's downhill, but like that just looks kind of beautiful. So does that look? Well, we're going to go that way. Neither of these are on Google Maps, so I might have to turn back. But there's a, but there's a map right here that says I can go that way. So we're going to, we're going to go for it while it's still light. I'm going down. We're going. Why not? We're the 
this sun just sneak through these trees. Oh, it's beautiful. And you know, I've got to say, for a road that isn't on Google Maps, this is a much better road than like half of the roads in the middle of nowhere Google has taken me on. So if you're watching Google, you need to update your Gifu maps. And the walk has led us to this bell. It's cool that, you know, there isn't a road leading here on maps, but there is just one in general. Now, I don't actually know what it's called. Google Maps didn't tell me what it's translated as, but cool to just find out here. But I went to record this thing and just look at the sun behind me. How beautiful is that lens flare? I'll just put my finger over it to ruin it, but wow. And I have emerged into civilization. I have no idea where I am. I haven't checked the map, but all I need to do now is follow the road to Donkey. In doing so, I made my way back to the station, which is so beautiful little at night. I don't know if it's just the time of the year, if it's like Christmas or what, but it was amazing to walk around. And there was the statue of Nobunaga right outside the station. my first full day in Gufu, first stop, the Zenkoji Shrine, before we go up the mountain. This shrine is beautiful, it's going to speak for itself. I love the bridge in the middle that you can't walk on. So the day is new and after a brief stop up at a wonderful temple and shrine, I am heading up this mountain where you can just vaguely see in the distance the castle we are going for. Now, most castles in Japan have kind of, every castle I've been to in Japan has been on the same playing field as everything else. Except that this one is all the way up there, should give it a pretty good view. Let's find out. On the way back, little temple building. Now, I know there are some ways to walk up the mountain yourself, and initially this was my plan, but when I saw the state of some of the roads, I decided it wasn't for me, and turned back to go on, on the ropeway. You get to explore this beautiful Japanese garden on the way with fountains and everything. Lovely walk before we even get there. Now at the mountain, first on the list was the Squirrel Park, where you can feed your own squirrels, your own squirrels, you can feed these squirrels, you're gonna own them. It was adorable, walking around so close to them, they were used to humans, they have a pretty large, decent space to explore, which I appreciated, and we gotta find some, to give a little feed. Hello, hello little guy. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. i This, this is really cool. <laughs> you can try and pull away. Oh, that one didn't mind. The last one was very feisty. So the fun thing is that my name is uh, my name in Furigana is Lisu. It's quite all in Japanese. Is Lisu. So this is this is my place. That was incredible. 
I've got another observatory, even higher at the last time. I'm further over this way, and you see the river. Yeah. And we've got one more spot. Another stop here before we descend. And this time we get a view in this direction as well. This really is just not quite 360 because there's some trees in the way, but it's pretty damn good. At the end, I decided I didn't fancy the walk down, so got the lift once more. The different colours of leaves as you descended the autumn foliage starting to come out more so at the bottom, but still little, 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 little bits here and there. It was really nice. We made my descent on the cable car, and now it's a brief walk through Gifu Park, which is lovely. You get to look at this awesome autumn foliage, and then there's someone new to see tomorrow. <laughs> Last of the day, Japan, China, Peace Friendship Park, very cool. On the walk back from the park, you can take a brief walk down one of the historic streets if you see if it does take you back in time with it. Alright, I'm waiting for my train now to get to the next destination, but I wanted to quickly know. The trains here can be a little bit awkward compared to England. England, any station you don't want to go anywhere, that's fine. Here it's like because there's a different railway company in charge, they're like, no, we'll give we'll sell you a ticket to one station, you have to buy another ticket at that station. Which is just kind of annoying. Especially if it means you could miss a train because it's the different times, but whatever. However, these local trains also have their own promotions and appeal, and this one was Hello Kitty themed today, apparently. I had to get as much videos as I could while not getting other people. And here we are in Yoro Station at the far reaches of Gifu to see something which I hope looks as cool as it's online in person. But first we have to get there, and where are we heading? But the very ominously named Site of Reversible Destiny. So it may seem at first that I've come to a completely abandoned park an hour away from Gifu, which doesn't seem very special, but there is something here that may, in fact, change the course of my life. And while this crazy cascade of buildings was clearly what I was looking for, finding the entrance was another matter, as I managed to walk all the way around before actually finding it. So we got a nice view of the park, but eventually we found the entrance. Such as this rock face, which Joe intended to climb. It was kind of dangerous, but it's, it's fine. Just do it, I guess. different exhibits all playing with different heights and just really just being a whole different experience if you're ever in Kifu I'd recommend 
Now, like, I think some of those rocks were quite sharp, so I'm not quite sure how that got better from safety. But, like, this massive hole in the ground? That seems dangerous. This is a special kind of place. I don't want to fall in that. I can't look at the camera, but look at where I'm going. The next exhibit meant to represent a house, but things are all a little out of place as furniture is inside walls or through ceilings or in different parts of the house, they called it. It was sure a weird thing to walk around. You could see a mattress on one side of the wall and then the other. Honestly, these spaces are quite tight to navigate through. And you never know what's going to be around the next corner, which part of your house you're going to find. Like, right? here we've got half of the bath. Look up at just the right angle. You can see a chair stuck in the ceiling. Why is it shaking? Well, our next challenge, we've got more verticality, except we're actually taking part in it this time. We've got massive holes to watch out for. Um, so let's hope it's okay. The wind here was super strong, so I can't hear what I was saying at the time, but there was a lot of different directions to explore up, down, around, and I chose to first go along this path into the unknown. Quite a thin bit. I don't know if my backpack's actually going to make it. Oh, it's a squeeze. And uh, it's just catching up all around us. Oh, and then suddenly we go uphill. This place plays with height better than any place I've been, I think. It's fantastic. Also, the sun's completely in my eyes. I hope this is a good shot. And suddenly into the gloom. Oh, this is quite the angle for me to get through. With my bag. Oh, how tight this is. With my bag, I barely made it. My phone's not happy either. spooky part. There's no lights or anything. A brief light at the end of the tunnel. And also I'm worried if I came on this the wrong way because some Japanese people had the very turn narrowly squeeze past each other. But I'm here now. There's a views from here though. It's a puddle to cross. I don't think that's probably part of it. Oh, now I know I've not gone the wrong way. Because this is actually a dead end. So it's intended that you have to brush past people. Certainly no way down from here. Oh, it's making me scared of the heights almost. One slow viewpoint there. You can see a everywhere. Oh, I guess that means back we go. There's some places that would be much harder to squeeze past people. So, fingers crossed, we'd have to turn back. So, this is me standing up straight. I just can't. I think running into people and having to manage this is probably part of the exhibit, actually. It's quite fun. If I limit the Japanese, we're not to say. There's not much space, is there? Like, it's just like. Oh, nearly slipped. Okay, we're good. We're good. I made a joke with some Japanese people that the space was too tiny and they laughed. So I have mastered Japanese comedy. Not quite, but... Strong wind strike again, so I've no idea what I was saying, but basically I had to run into three different people on my way there and way back. And we had to just like squeeze and put my bag over the edge, try and get past each other, and that was cool. Slowly led downwards into this what formation. So we don't want to climb up that, but I kind of want to see what's on the other end of this first. I almost slipped to get on this bit. A lady <laughs> saw me do it and we exchanged a quick side glance. I, I saw you and I was like, oh, but this is the other end. I thought it might come out. There's all these marbles on the floor everywhere. It just sends all the way back to that building over there. So I don't know if they mean something. I'm enjoying this place because it feels like you're exploring it. It reminds me of Team Lab's Borderless. And that's a really good compliment, because that was one of the best art exhibits I've been to. And this one was a third the price, tiny outdoors, and just plays in a completely different metric. Height is king in this park. I 
saw these from the distance behind me, these massive things just coming up the wall. I don't know. I have no idea what these mean, but it sure stand out. Some places like this, I'd have to like crawl under this tree and then weave and duck in like, this is not a place for a bag, I now realize. But I needed that to get my stamps, so it's fine. Yeah, like, I, I don't think I can even fit through this gap. This is, this is too much for me. Honestly, the paths here are a little, decept a little deceptive, because sometimes the paths are easier, sometimes the grass is easier. Nothing is consistent. Where to put this place is it feels like a theme park it feels like it feels like an amusement park you go to as a kid but you go on the climbing frames and all that except everybody here for the most part is an adult it is 2 p.m on a monday so it kind of helps with that but you want that kind of feeling again around other adults and you don't feel childish while doing so i'd recommend a visit to this place i mean look at how beautiful it is Now I'm down at the bottom, we have this white see-through maze. Actually from the top looked a lot taller, so again that playing with perspective to make it look entirely different. Whereas now, it's, you know, it's, it's, I can't even touch it with my hand. I just walked up to the side because I think it's finally time to leave. And do not enter. Do not enter. So I'm um, gonna go back down again. Oh, for nothing. So is this weird little Japan upside down map? And with that, I feel as if I have fully shown off this park. If you want to visit, it's Yoro, which is about. Now that we've left this site, we can vaguely see on our left that there is a theme park which we will not be going in today. We have objectives elsewhere, but it's interesting to see how it is. Playing its music, there was one ride going and the rest is essentially abandoned. Crazy. So we make our way towards the next spot, it's too windy, but you can see how goddamn beautiful this is. There's a journey. There's someone I'm trying to go here. But wow, the journey is fantastic to get there. The old style Japanese buildings next to the autumn colours. Amazing. This is honestly such a gorgeous path. You can see the water running down all the way. Beautiful sights above. Perfectly paved. You don't have to worry about tripping, but it is bloody uphill, and it's going to be bloody worth it. Now, if Gifu's told me one thing, it's don't rely on Google here, because Google wanted me to go on this path, which is like really long and windy. When there's this very straight path leading up here, which I just followed. 
So Google doesn't know Gifu that well. If you're in Tokyo or Kyoto or anywhere major, Google is your best friend. But honestly, it feels the further out you go, just the local maps are pretty damn good. And my dad's gonna love that I've said that. And here we are at our destination, Yolo Falls. The favorite thing about this waterfall is all the time you're walking up here, you walk directly alongside where it's going. It's such a beautiful fashion. So this is a special one, I enjoy this. And now we just have the long, beautiful walk back to the station. And then I'm gonna stop off on the way as well. I think it's gonna be nighttime by the time I arrive, but there's a city in between that I have to change in anyway. So I may as well look around, right? I arrived at my stop off point at Ogaki and I noticed something. I'm like, oh, there's an anime I recognize in the distance over there. A silent voice. That's interesting. I haven't seen that much other places in Japan. They came out a long time ago. So my plans may have just changed drastically. I came here because there was a castle. It's like, it was close to the station. I may as well get off and see it. But I've just seen that this is where Silent Voices Base, which is a very popular anime film. And I recognized the name Ogaki in the back of my head. And then as soon as I saw it, just in a window for something, it's like, oh, is that here? And it is. So, I will not be doing the full tour of it because it isn't as near and dear to me as how it is. But there was one location I'd like to find, so I'm going to see with Google if that's possible. Or if it's just, I'll have to appreciate it. I'm going to see if that's possible. And when I went back to look at the film, I recognised from the places I've been to today, the characters went to the site of Reversible Destiny. They went to the falls, and it was really nice to see that in animation after having been there. So, I'm having all the first location here. It's in the dark. I didn't expect to... I would have come in the day if I'd have known this was here, but this is my last day in the area, so... This is the bridge where the love was confessed. It's kind of... this is the picture I had in my head of the movie, so... I'm happy to have seen this. <laughs> just without even planning. But I soon found out this wasn't even the main bridge, this was just another one from the film. Let's go see the main one. It just feels surreal when I have moments like this where it's like, I had a plan, I was just going to have a little wander around here, and then I'm like, oh, this is my, I'm never coming back to this city, this is, you know, a little bit out of the way. This is probably my only time that I'm going to have to go and wander and see this place. So I had plans to go back, and now I'm wandering at 7pm through a random city that I never thought I'd come to, to see some anime stuff. And that's, that's my Japan experience. And this is the place and there is practically no light around for you to see it. There's a heron on the waterfall over here. There's the actual bridge just here. I recognise, you know, parts of this park from the film, but there's not enough light to do it justice. There's a chance I might be heading this way in like June or April next year or something like that. So I might visit again and come here to see it in the light, but there's, there's no chance of it any other way. I could do tomorrow, but I shouldn't do tomorrow, no, I actually just shouldn't do tomorrow. Underneath the famous bridge. I've got to go and walk on it, don't I? Why am I going under it? All right, and here we go. This is the famous bridge with its very distinct features of having these two jutting out of it. Now there's a tree trying to encroach on the area. But I've watched this film a few times and this brings back some memories. Let's get the Mii cam off, so that at least now have some flash and kind of capture this space. And I'm so happy that I didn't know this was here until I got here. I just, that makes me happier than if I'd have landed, honestly. This is a wonderful place to hide from the world and have your thoughts crowded and blasted with the sound of this loud water. Oh, this is a nice little park. Camera. In real life it looks white, that's weird. 
looks so green, what? And I'm, I'm not green. This isn't green. I don't know why everything's green today, but it is. This is the castle that I've come to see. They do look quite similar to other ones, but this one, I don't know, it feels a bit smaller. It's obviously lower to the ground, very different to the one in Gifu in terms of elevation. But this marks the last point on my Gifu tour. Okay, last thing for this video, adding on. Why is Paddington Bear here? Silent Voice is literally just down there. And I was Paddington Bear. Why is Paddington Bear in here? I don't understand. <laughs>